Welcome everyone to uh, this June 28th meeting of the Green After Death Group. And today we, uh, despite we have a, a few missing folks, we're just gonna go ahead with uh, some initial planning for our J uh, July 19th retreat for you to uh, build out some vision and perhaps goals we'll see uh, for our group. Um, we're gonna start today just in thinking, kind of a little mindful exercise if, uh, oh, here comes Jean, awesome. So cool. Great. We'll let him get connected. Hi, Jean. Hi, hi. Sorry I'm late. <laughs> hi, Jean. I see you're on your iPhone. I am on my iPhone. Mm -hmm. Glad you're uh, here. It, it was a kind of inopportune that uh, Yahoo wanted my new password, and I didn't want to deal with it, so we just went straight to the phone. Okay. <laughs> well, we're, just, we're, we're glad you're here. And we, we kind of delayed our getting started because we're, uh, we're, we were missing a couple of folks. Uh, we still, uh, we know that Karen isn't gonna be able to make it and we're not sure about Laura. Um, or Leanne. Or Leanne. So they might be joining us too, Jean. So we're, we literally are, we're just getting started when you came in, so perfect timing. Good. And I just wanted, I wanted Jean and, uh, and Holly to know that I'm gonna be leaving uh, exactly at 2.30 cause I have to get to an airport. Oh yeah, you better, that's critical. Yeah. So you can just drop off, wave and drop off and I will. all will be well. Very quietly. All yeah. will be well, yeah. Okay, so um, thinking about our retreat and about kind of an opening question here for us today to set the tone for what we're going to do. Um, uh, thank, many thanks to Hillary as she posed this question. At the end of our retreat, what images or words can you imagine to describe what happened? And whoever feels like they want to go first, uh, please feel free. I'll be- Well, there are two words that come to my mind and they both begin with G, uh, with C, I think. One would be uh, congealed, <laughs> uh, coming together and firming up. And the other one would be um, clarified. Oh, I guess like clarified butter. Interesting. I'm also thinking of the word clarity, but more like clarity of purpose, you know, like the, um, the, sa the, the sails are in the wind and, and, the, and the direction is uh, clear. Yeah, charted maybe. Mm -hmm. Hi, Hi Leanne. Leanne. Hey, sorry I'm late. I have a $50,000 contract that's melting in front of me and I got very distracted. Oh, oh dear. And, um, and my house is full of people who don't have air conditioning. So I'll be zooming from the bedroom today. <laughs> Same here. Uh, yeah, so maybe more background noise than usual, but it's all good. Yeah, thanks. Glad you're here. Yeah, very good. We just are getting started, Leanne. Just barely got started. Um, and we are uh, just taking a minute to think about uh, uh, if we can envision the end of our retreat, what images or words could we imagine to describe what happened? And so far, uh, 
Uh, Evan had said congealed, clarified like butter. I love any food reference. Um, <laughs> and then um, Holly Blue chimed in, clarity of purpose. Who said something about sales? Was that you? Me. Sales? Yeah, that was me also. Sales are in the wind and the direction is clear. Oh, I heard that part. When I think about what it might feel like at the end of our day, for me, um, I want to feel some weight off my shoulders, even though maybe there's not a good reason for me to feel weight on my shoulders. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I, when I think of a vision, it's us smiling and laughing and feeling more connected. So maybe mm -hmm. even more connected than we already are. Um, and I, I would love to feel a freedom around this work, you know, a, an ease, even though what we're doing may not be easy. Mm -hmm. I want to feel an ease around the approaches that we talk about. Mm I guess I want to come away with the feeling of a solidarity of purpose um, that we're all looking forward to this and developing, developing this, this dream and having this six, having this happen in Thurston County. Um, that's really big. I mean, having this happening close to home is, uh, is what I want to see. Thank you. What comes to mind first for me is, um, might be a little more modest, is being connected to you folks. Um, I mean, I have a standing relationship with Karen Lohman and, and Hillary, but um, yeah, to, move forward in this kind of endeavor with other people. I'd like to really feel like I've had some connection with you as a human being, not a Zoom image. Um, maybe more clarity about, you know, as we get to know each other, what roles that we might play in different ways. That's sort of part and parcel of that first part. Um, yeah, that's all that comes forward at this at this point. Thank you. Well, this is Hillary, and I'd say words are inspiration, beauty, in part because we're going to be at Leanne's place, connection, and understanding the gifts and strengths that each of us bring. And short-term, long-term vision. Um, this is Kim and um, building on, well, not, but supporting what uh, Hillary was saying. Uh, for any new endeavor or any group of folk, um, my hope is always that, um, you know, kind of in, in line with that short term versus long term, that when folks think about the direction that um, would be taken, that um, folks feel good about walking before they run, because sometimes the sequence of um, how folks want to implement um, their vision is important. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else? 
We're right on time, according to our agenda. So even though we well, start, I, I think we're on task too because I I'm uh, I'm really um, in tune with what everybody said. I think we're all right on task. Yeah. You know, there's something else that occurs to me. And this is kind of like the, the, the very sort of uh, boots on the ground side of getting acquainted with one another. And this even, you know, since I, since I can't actually be there, maybe I'm kind of looking uh, at it from a slightly different lens. It's like really understanding in terms of um, either packing or unpacking the toolkit, you know, what what does each person bring in the way of, um, let me start this over again. What are the core tools and, pra and principles, uh, 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 competencies, tools and competencies that it's gonna take to realize a vision and who among the core group either has those tools and competencies or knows how to access them. That could be another person. It could be like, oh, if we just bring in so-and-so, that's gonna uh, exponentially increase our traction, that, that kind of thing. So, so um, you know, really looking at the, at, the, at the tools and competencies it's going to take to um, take things from vision to um, boots on the ground and who has it or knows where to get it. Great. Yeah, I, I like that. Uh, the thought of who's not at the table. And right. it's, the, it's almost like a cat tools, competency and connections. Thank you. Yeah. Thank I'm going you. to limit the amount of whining um, that that I do at this planning meeting. About not being able to come. Yeah. Right. At least in person. In person, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. I think that is that was a super helpful few minutes. And I think it will help shape our, our time as we think about the retreat very nicely. Um, if you're looking at the agenda, you'll see that the next thing I, I put down, and I just may have done this in a, um, a whim of of concern uh, when we were putting the agenda together, but our different working styles, uh, I'm, mm -hmm. I might, I might, I don't know that it's important to talk about it at this particular moment. Um, I think what I was thinking, uh, Hillary and I had had a conversation um, and we just know that, you know, in a group this size, there, you know, there's just different working styles. And I've, I thought I've heard, I thought I'd heard in the last couple of meetings, maybe a little bit of impatience on the side of a couple of folks. Um, like we're not quite moving fast enough or that we've been talking about the same things for a while and that we hadn't um, yet felt loose enough or um, safe enough maybe that if some of us were had an opportunity to have a conversation with someone, an influencer or someone that we thought might, you know, want to become a part of our group uh, um, or, or just someone that we could have a conversation with about what we were doing that maybe we, there wasn't, uh, people didn't feel sure that that's what they should be doing yet, uh, that sort of thing. So it just, I just didn't know if we needed to talk about that, about kind of our different approaches or if that, if we feel comfortable that that might work itself out as we go. Um, I guess what I'm seeing in regards to our different styles is that I have a concern that we, uh, if I am uh, one of the people that's helping to lead this time together at a retreat, uh, I don't want us to, I'm concerned that maybe one or two of us might come away feeling like we just had the same conversation at our retreat that we've been having for the last few months and not coming have didn't come away with something tangible. Um, so maybe that's just me personally, and maybe just saying it was enough. 
but if anyone else has anything to say about that at this moment, please feel free. I think it's brilliant to bring up personal styles because I know if I'm getting really excited, enthusiastic, I can have a tendency to talk over people. And I just love it when people say, back off, I'm not done, you know, that sort of thing to acknowledge our own personal styles. Um, and yeah, I think it's just wise in working, trying to work together in a group to just recognize personal styles and have that be an open topic. You know, if, if something does feel like that for somebody to just say, hey, I'm noticing that you have a really strong push to move forward and but we're balancing this with everybody's needs and how we define it. But we acknowledge that that's what you want to do and where you are and just know that not everybody's there or whatever. You know, I just think being aware, being mindful, I think is beautiful. I think it's a really wise perspective to bring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find myself wondering if the and and I mean, God forbid, you know, an exercise, a team building exercise, gag me with a spoon. Mm -hmm. But uh, I I just wonder if there is a um, if there's a, a an approach that be that could be taken to a conversation um, that is really sort of on this topic, you know larks versus owls versus don't say anything to me until I've had at least one cup of coffee or, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying? Just, just, just some like real basic, um, you know, it's a whole different thing to be together in the same room, she said, without whining. Then, <laughs> you know, to just, you know, who are you when you first wake up in the morning? You know, who's got to go to bed by nine or they're going to be crying and who's going to have their most brilliant idea at two o'clock in the morning? You know, those sorts of things. Yeah, thank you. And something that sounds I like an agenda item. It does. Go ahead, I'm thinking the same thing, Kim. No, oh, I love that, Kim. And, and what I was going to remark on is I love the fact that we allow pauses. And so the fact that we're not just filling up the space with our excited ideas. And so, yeah, that, that's a real plus that we, we give space for thoughts to arise. Hmm. Anything else? If I could just say, again, partly because I'm not going to be there, that there's a group of us down here that are um, a few steps behind where the Green After Death group is and um, are kind of like peering over my shoulder with uh, enthusiasm and curiosity and, um, you know, bring it home, Holly, bring it home, Holly. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, there's definitely a level of frustration down here with how long it's taken and that very sort of didn't we already have this conversation and why are we doing it again and how come we haven't found money land blah 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 when are we gonna we when are we gonna we um and so i would just like ask you guys to keep in uh keep in your awareness as you have these conversations the fact that you're uh, you're not operating in a vacuum and that you know, I mean, we know about me and my group down here, but who knows how many other groups are eagerly waiting for this to get figured out, because I think it's pretty clear to many people that um, this is really a watershed moment in terms of this kind of thing beginning to happen. And um no pressure, no pressure, but you know, it's, it's like, 
there there's an energy building and it feels to me like this group is really um you know right right at at, at a very important uh place in the in the process so you know just just know that thank you And I love that there's no cookie cutter. I mean, we've heard from Jody and Freddie and uh, Lee. And, uh, Lee and, you know, what we're reading online is that each community kind of makes it their own. And so we get to benefit from those who've come before us. And it's exciting to know we're going to kind of create our own movement. Yeah. The other thing that keeps popping up in my mind is uh, somehow helping me keeping me remember that we are just to normalize where we're at as a group. Uh, we're still we're still doing that forming stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, we're still storming. We're still trying to get used to each other, and uh, that's normal. That's just totally where we're at, and that's okay. Yeah. Kim likes your language, Evan. The storming, oh, really? the storming part, Kim, the storming mm -hmm. and norming. Yeah, forming, storming, norming, performing. Yeah, I, um, I'm very much in favor. I found that framework um, to be super useful. So I appreciate that it is coming up. Yeah, right on. It's forming F as in Frank, storming, norming. Well, it, it's, it starts with the, the storming. Oh. That's, yeah. Okay. Storming and forming sort of, it, one flows into the next. And you what storm. is that? Yeah, is that part, I know I've heard it before, but is, does it have a, a, a name for the framework? Uh, well, it's just a model, one of many, for okay. uh, how small group dynamics work. Yeah. Uh, the life of a group starts with, um, you know, storming and forming and then going on from there. That makes me just breathe easy. Thinking yeah. about, thinking about us in terms of the life of our group. Mm. Developmental right. stages. Exactly. Kind of makes me go, ah. Oh. I like that. So simple. Well, I also like that um, I've been pointed out normalization and so group dynamics are going to normalize how that comes up and that, you know, the requirement to process just in order to function. Mm -hmm. Normalizing that as well. So I'll go ahead. I, I think it's going to be really healthy for me because um, I've done very little in groups my whole life. I've just been a self-employed guy. I, you know, put a focus on a subject and went out and either got the big yes or got the big no, but I just jumped on whatever it was and, you know, rather coarsely, I would say in a lot of cases that, so it's really going to be great for me. Uh, to be part of a group and and do it in a concise cons, you know consensus way um, I'm looking forward to that I think it's going to be really healthy for me <laughs> how fun Gene. yeah yeah a different switch it's a real switch Rudy I love that so is it going through anyone else's mind net right now as we chew on this that um, that coming away from our retreat with a vision and goals is might be um, too lofty of a of a of a goal for our time together, or does that still feel? Does that still feel right? Versus spending that 
maybe more of that time doing some finding out about each other, some relationship building. And I'm not saying that those, these things are mutually exclusive, but um, is, it, is it feeling like maybe, because that really wasn't in my mind. It kind of felt like that would be a byproduct that we would be getting to know each other throughout the day. But does it, are we feeling like we want to actually maybe spend some time doing a, a some sort of a um, learning style exercise about each other or, I mean, that's what we, we heard that, right, Kim, you are saying that felt like it was a, an agenda item that was popping up, but I'm just kind of wondering about the balance of the day that we feel, um, still feel like we want to do all of it, it, it kind of every, both of those things. Are you understanding what I'm asking? I, I, yeah. think I, am. I think to have our mission statement and goal, it's, I think that is somewhat lofty for one day. And it could turn out that we're all in such agreement that it works out fine. I think we kind of don't know. Yeah. Um, I think it's worth spending some time. And yes, I do think it's a byproduct of just being together in a, in a space. And, you know, I can think of stuff I would want on the agenda. I mean, it's like, are we the group? If we're considering other people in the group, how do we decide if there's other people in the group? So that's, in a, that's just something that keeps popping up in my brain. Um, <clears throat> yeah, decision by, con, you know, modified consensus, deciding. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, right. Well, okay. Um, I know I'm not leaving space there for everyone to answer my question. It's 2.08, which means we have uh, 22 minutes to kind of flesh out an agenda. Does that feel like we want to just jump in? I think we should. Yeah, I think we can. Okay. I, I think that uh, all the pieces have been identified and um, I think there's enough um, enough uh, comfort and frankness among us today to get to something that'll be good enough. Um, in okay. terms of you know a mission and values and all that, uh, for me it would be fine to say, well, let's draft a draft, it's carved yeah. in stone, <laughs> and um, as long as we just allow ourselves to be flexible. I think it would be, at least for me, I guess, <laughs> as you were talking earlier, Angie, I, I guess I was, I was identifying with the more impatient parts of the group, possibly, because I, ha we have been talk I have been talking with you and Hillary about this for over a year, and, that, and, and Holly shortly thereafter. And yeah, I do want it to congeal and to, um, and to get down the highway a little. Okay then, with that in mind, um, you'll see that we crafted the agenda in a way that is, uh, that called out roles at the retreat. And, uh, you know, this is, doesn't belong to any one of us. And certainly I've been acting as a facilitator for the meetings, but I don't have any special gifts for facilitating a retreat where we're trying to kind of drill down on some things. So it seems like um, each of us carrying a piece of this day might be a good way to go about it. Hillary uh, and I just, just had a quick conversation about it. Um, does everyone feel willing to take part of the day, part of the agenda. Hey, to, Angie. Yeah. I'm just curious, uh, you know, we kind of threw the paint at the board. Um, I'm just curious uh, how this feels to folks. You mean what we've already laid out? Yeah, exactly. And, 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 with, and yeah. with the addition of um, some sort of personal style conversation. I kind of feel like that popped up as an additional item mm -hmm. here on the agenda. So you're talking about the list. Does it feel good, Hillary, that starts with Lee's materials 
Right, right. And and we could just, I can't, um, I'll, I'll see if I can just post it in the uh, chat in case oh. people aren't looking at it. Oh, their... I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. I got, cool. I got it here. Cool. I guess I'm thinking maybe there are things missing and, yes. you know, other, yeah. other topics. Yeah. Thanks. Almost there. Chat box. Oh, hang on. So when I've done these things before, we've often had a convener and a, and a um, closer. Um, so that's what that convener, oh, I didn't get closer in there. Um, that's all that was, was just a, a thought about having someone take responsibility for opening and closing our day. Um, Food, maybe that's just one person taking coordination of the food, not one person supplying all the food, one person coordinating, you know, who's, who's bringing what. We had a previously talked about at our last meeting about all of us reviewing Lee's materials, Lee's video, the, if we haven't done it already, Freddie's video, jo Jody's video, and coming ready to discuss our kind of takeaways from that. We've already kind of done that. We've had some debriefs of those, but kind of circling back around with the things that we brought away from, the, from those things. But um, just kind of taking that one step further, what if somebody guided those conversations? So somebody guides, maybe comes really prepared to talk about Lee's materials, really prepared to talk about Lee's video or to lead the conversation um, so that we could maybe drill down a little faster on those things. Um, so that was just a thought. And then, I mean, that's kind of a bit, the, the next one, goals, mission, values, that's kind of a big one. And I don't quite know what to do with that as far as how to lead and tease those things out or who might feel like they have a particular style or talent or, uh, you know, uh, kind of hunger for that. And then um, if I could just interject right at that point. So um, I used to work for this couple that was one of those sort of, you know, mom and pop work together forever kind of things. And they had an exercise that they did when they were trying to um, tease out how they felt about something is that they didn't talk about it. They each went and wrote about it. And then they shared their writings with one another and then they discussed. And it was a really interesting thing. I mean, this was like people who'd been together for 50 years, you know. And I don't know if it resonates, where it might fit, but I haven't thought about it in a long time and it just sort of popped into my thinking. So I'm sharing it. You know, I wonder if there might be something that, that I, I mean, there are things that get teased out in conversation and there are things that get teased out in free rights. You know, it's just when you're alone with your thoughts. So I'm just offering that, you know, maybe that that would be something that, you know, somebody could come up with with two or three just like real, you know, juicy questions that everybody wrote about and, and shared with one another. Thank you. Thank you, Leanne. We'll see you.
So since we're missing folks um, for this particular conversation, um, do we want to have a lead and a backup for the points that you all have already sort of thrown against the wall? And then that way for folks that aren't here, if they are really passionate about something, you know, they can talk with their partner on that matter to figure out who does what, or um, is there another way that folks might want to assign roles? Like we could say folks, you know, I could put together a quick Google Doc and um, folks could just put their names down by the things that they're interested in. Yeah, that, sound, that sounds good to me. I mean, we could just kind of fire off today, those of us that kind of have any thought about what we, what we feel like we want to do. So this is Hillary and uh, so I am wondering if it makes sense, I mean, as much as I thought it was maybe a good idea to be the conversation leads for, for these various things. And I'm wondering how do we like really jump into what we're about? Uh, and the one thing I don't see, and maybe we were assuming convener is that person who like brings our group together and that that may need to take some time. So I'm almost wondering about like moving up. I mean, almost like we're all coming prepared to be well versed in all these various Lee's materials, et cetera. And then how do we like jump in with both feet having all this information uh, kind of in the background. So I'm, yeah. That sounds really right to me. That resonates for me. Yeah, in fact, if we did that, it did it that way, I think really all we would need to have is someone, maybe two of us, that's what we used to do for large group stuff. One of us would write at newsprint and the other one would direct the conversation, sort of a process person, and just really um, get into goals, mission and values, uh, being informed by all of our rich, um, all of our rich dipping into those sources. That's what I imagine. I think it would be too tedious to present them again. It, and it, here's another thing it would do. It would really, um, the fact that half of us aren't here today, um, we would really need a commitment to really take the time to um, review those materials, or if any of us haven't ever seen them, to really look at them and come prepared. Uh, what that does for me is, uh, show a certain commitment to um, putting energy into this process, into this project. And uh, I think there needs to be something of that sort for me to help develop trust in a uh, formative group like this. Yeah, I hear that. So I think, you know, doing, uh, doing planning around, you know, provisional goals, missions and values, I think we can get to that very quickly. We've already had conversations among all eight or nine of us here more than once to show that we in fact do have a lot of common goals, missions and values. We just need to get them down on newsprint. And in doing that, I think we'll be working on our getting to know each other on our working relationships, on our styles, on our insecurities, on our conflict styles. I mean, the whole, the whole barrel, the whole, the whole pot will be there stewing. So in that situation, we would kind of stick to this agenda. We'd, mm -hmm. we'd, mm -hmm. we'd do these same things. We just wouldn't, there wouldn't be, you know, somebody taking the lead, we would just kind of launch in. That's right. And somebody's writing the notes up on the mm -hmm. doohickey. Another one of us is kind of making sure the conversation is staying somewhat yeah. focused. And if we wanted to share leadership, it might be good to just say, okay, um, you know, A and B, you'll start the conversation for the first half hour. 
And then C and D, why don't you be the next duo and take it from there? And then F and G can do the next half hour. I mean, if we're gonna have shared leadership and shared conviction, and um, that this is gonna be a collaborative effort, um, let's, let's just put the, put the show on the road. Okay. I don't so, know, I'm just coming up with ideas so yeah. that we don't have to get worried about performing in front of everybody. Well, let's yeah. do it in duos. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm just thinking, cause that's the way we would do trainings and workshops where I come from my, you know, from my, uh, from my background. Um, and it, it seemed to work well. And when we did co-mediating, the same thing would happen. Uh, one mediator would direct the conversation, the other one would scribe. Well, and it's, it strikes me, Evan, that what you're describing is in, it, is in itself um, a, a practical application of, of an exercise of getting acquainted with one another. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. You bet. Yeah. Yeah, well, exactly it's a twofer. It's a twofer. It, it is a twofer. Yep. Yeah. Just and put I, your feet in the water and do it and see what yeah. happens. Well, and personally, that sounds really good to me, but I guess this is another another situation where I feel like maybe it doesn't feel good to somebody else here, or that feels too loose, or um, does anybody have any? Looks like um, Hillary popped off. I'm sure she'll pop back in. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it happens. Yeah. Oh, there she, there she is. <laughs> There's Hillary. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad you to pose the question. You know, I'm just putting it out there in order because I know I'm a short timer. I'm going to be here for about 13 more minutes. Yeah. And I just want to say after I leave that I'm fine with whatever you folks come up with uh, and any way of getting input from people that weren't here today, uh, you know, I'm willing to go forward. I just okay. want to um, make it as simple as possible and we don't have to keep, um, we don't have to keep perseverating on getting agreement on all kinds of little details. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like that too. Hillary, you were muted. Were you going to say something when you came back in? You're still muted. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I got kicked off and, and okay. I don't know if Jean did as well. No. Oh, okay. I think Jean's been here the whole time. Yeah, Jean? Yeah. Are you still yeah. there? Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. oh Are I you awake, Jean? I can't see you. <laughs> I'm very awake. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I'm surprised. I'm surprised how alert I am right now. It's very, <laughs> it's very good. Don't oh, tell me. That's ask great. me in half an hour, but right now, very well. Great. Yeah, and I resonate with what you said too, um, uh, Evan. That if I were to drop off right now for whatever reason, that I would feel fine with whatever we 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 chose going forward how to proceed for the day. I'd be happy if we came together with almost zero plan and just started yakking about what our vision would be and that the natural, that the organics of what we learned from Lee and, um, you know, all those rich. Yeah. Yeah. That those yeah. things would just drizzle in naturally, but yeah. again, that's, that's my style. So, Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm wondering if folks would be opposed to, kind of doing an exercise over the next three weeks and maybe submitting it back and then and and I'm thinking of we did this great and and Holly Blue you mentioned something similar we did this great animal personality uh questionnaire and it was just so helpful for us each to really understand how we deal with conflict etc mm -hmm. um, and that maybe there's a way that and I'll volunteer that we, you know, kind of um, make it so that we have the answers prior to. Uh, and yeah, so uh, that's just a thought and wondered what folks. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. That's, that would be great. I'd be fine with that. I'm, I'm I, I know that one. Yeah, oh, okay. I've done it. I've done it before and I can't remember what I was, but I really, it's just a it's just a quick and kind of easy way, not perfect, but just a way to just get an idea, a sense about mm -hmm. that stuff. Mm -hmm. I love it, Hillary, and thank you okay. for volunteering. Okay, anyone opposed? No. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Do you want okay. to send that out to us, Hillary? Yeah. I, I you, certainly you have it? will. Yes, okay, cool. I will. Yeah. So we'll put yeah. that we'll put that at the front of the agenda for the day. Cool. Kind of the re kind of kind of going through that with each other. Does that sound okay, Hillary? Sure. I and like that, that that could be our convening. When I've been a part of convenings before or closings, it was a reading or a poem or a mm -hmm. something to set the day. So it's not like so this, that person has responsibility mm -hmm. okay. for convening mm -hmm. the group as much as just calming us, mm -hmm. breathing together, mm -hmm. doing something. So, mm -hmm. so if anybody has interest in doing that or closing us out with something, it doesn't have to be a poem. It can uh be Anyway. I could I could find some roomy poem and have three minutes of silence. I mean, I mean that's easy. Okay. <laughs> that's fine. Either at the beginning or the end. I don't care. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, and we'll we'll I'll put that out there to the larger group too when we send out a draft. Sure. Absolutely. And if it's someone else have. has more more interest in that, that's fine. I mean, I'm just you know. I'll do whatever. Yeah. And I think we can work out in an email string um, kind of how we go about if we're going to do teams or or maybe even be looser than that, draw names that at, at the place without, you yeah, know. Yeah, there you I mean, go. Yeah, yeah, I mean. Or we could do it alphabetically and just that could be random too. Yeah, yeah. whatever, whatever. Yeah. Deck of cards. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, I just my faith in how it plays out is very strong because we I like know that. what we want to come away with and I trust us. So mm. well said. Really I have such I have such a strong sense that there's something that wants to happen and it's mm -hmm. picked this group to happen it. Mm -hmm. And it's about listening to that voice as much as it is uh, listening to one another. Mm -hmm. uh, it, right on. This, uh, you know, I mean, what without getting too theological, my my personal pet name for God is the Great Imagination. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, what are you imagining? You know. Yeah. What 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 wants to be born through us? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, what's the potential? Yeah. Right. Right. There's this, there's this thing that's crying out for manifestation. Right. And what, what is it, you know, give it a voice at the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right on. Okay, so if we feel like this is enough to, for uh, me to draft, uh, the agenda for the day, kind of try to capture what we've talked about and the, the vibe, the feeling of how we want to proceed, then um, I feel fine doing that. But is Angie, there uh, would, are you, um, is it technically uh, easy for you to actually have that all together with uh, all of the materials at one point? At once, you know, uh, all the review material from Lee and Freddie and Jody, all in one email package. Yeah, I now I can't I can't remember. I know that Lee's is a little bit more complicated because it's a bunch of documents and, um, but I did I did just I know that I can connect you guys to. I'm pretty sure. Let me just say yes, and I'll I we will figure it out. Okay, that would be great. I know we've got. Um, yeah, just I'll say yes to that. Or if there's a way that you could just lead us to whatever, you know, I know yeah. you're trying to create uh -huh. something that we all need to be comfortable with. Yeah, that could be an also a little litmus test for how, uh, how lazy we all are, or how committed we all are. Yeah, or, yeah. Well, and whatever. I did just send you I send you all an a, uh, invite today to a Google group through my email address. Yeah. I right. found out some things about Google Suite and Google Workspace that um, we can't establish as a nonprofit. We have to establish as a nonprofit or a business. Um, so, but there's probably other solutions 
wow. to, to that. So I did invite you guys just to, I just I was experimenting with establishing a group attached to my email address. So just answer that and I'll be poking around with that. And maybe that'll Great. be the answer, but I'm not sure that it will be. Okay. Okay. Well, that's a work in progress, but mm -hmm. you know, yeah. thanks for taking that on. Mm -hmm. sure. I mean, just assembling an archive, you know, and saying, okay, here's our shared library. And what did so-and-so say at that meeting on such and such a date? Oh, well, we know where to go and find it. So that, that the, um, the collective knowledge base gets really strong. Mm -hmm. And it's not that, you know, well, Hillary knows how to do that. So I don't. Wrong. Right, right. 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 Yeah. Well, folks, I'm going to say Bye, goodbye. Evan. Bye. Okay. Safe trip Goodbye. home. Thanks Thank so much. you very Thank much. work from far away. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you Glad so much. to be here. And, I'll and see Jean, you soon. We're staying on. Gene, we're staying okay. on. Okay. All right. Okay. Bye, Evan. Bye bye. Bye, Evan. Have a great bye. trip. Thank you. <sighs> Thank you, everybody. So, and if you think of times and ways that, that you know, from this time to that time that it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be too much of a bother to to you know set up a set up a laptop and open a zoom thing and and let me know because right now i've got that day just x'd out anyway so i'm going to leave it that way that's great yeah right i i think it's highly probable that we could have you eavesdropping at all or part or you know with one of our you know we'll I would think we could figure that out. I know that sound is sometimes an issue, like somebody hearing everything without mics that is, you know, trying to hear what's going on in a situation like that, but it's worth a try. Mm, it's mm. definitely worth a try. And not only that, you know, uh, recording that kind of stuff could be really um, rich. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, That's you know, true. it's not entirely self-serving. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you know, and that's why I really think that our, our having someone be a documentarian is pretty important and we'll, we'll kick mm -hmm. that around a little bit. I know you're talking about like recording, recording, but again, just having tried a few of these types of things, recording with a phone, without a microphone, you know, all that kind of stuff does get a little dicey, but again, worth exploring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and different things come through in in note taking than than you know just the raw recording. You get you know, um, right. it's a different lens. Yeah. Sorry, I'm babysitting my friend's dog who's here for the air conditioning. I'm trying to keep her out of trouble. <laughs> okay. All righty so then. Um, do we feel okay with where we are, Hillary? Do you have any other thoughts? I think it's great. Okay. I think it's great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I'm I'm excited to hear from Kim. Me too. Kim, we're so happy that you are willing to share some of your land story with us. Um. I'm really grateful uh, for everybody's time. And this was a fantastic exercise for me. Um, I, I walk around with a lot of this information and then, um, you know, I'll have encounters with folks who will ask me about it and I don't have, or I haven't historically had um, a response that feels full. And so this was really useful. And I hope that it's um, at the very least slightly interesting <laughs> um, for you guys for the next few minutes. Um, it looks pretty much like a photo album, and so I will share my screen, and we will get going. Great. Oh, except it looks like the host has disabled participant screen sharing. Hang on. I thought I had changed that. Hang on. Okay. How is it now? Um, it looks brilliant. Okay, so um, I don't have um, a name for the place or for a conservation cemetery that would be there. I've been toying around with a few things. 
Um, the reason why you see my email the way you see it is the quote um, that I was quite fond of. Um, death is not an extinguishing of the light. It's only putting out the lamp because the dawn has come, um, which I, which just strikes me as very beautiful. Um, but when I'm talking about it, the place casually with friends, we talk about it as uh, the Wildwood. So where is it located? Um, we are a mile off of the Pacific Coast Highway. Um, if you can see my mouse, we've got uh, the Capitol State Forest, Grace Harbor to the south. Uh, west, the Quinault Reservation to the northwest, and the Olympic National Forest to the northeast. Um, from Tum Water Falls, um, so Olympia is obviously right here, we're about 70 miles and we're about 30 miles from Ocean Shores, if anybody's ever vacationed there. Um, and I thought I wasn't going to need a lot of time, but then when I started putting together this PowerPoint, um, I realized I, I do get in the weeds, um, hence uh, why I'm going through it so quickly. So um, in my view, it's useful to understand uh, how land is commonly used in a region in order to understand some of the forces a specific piece of land might be subject to or have been subject to. In Grays Harbor, I found that to understand uh, ecological legacy, you nearly always have to understand the timber industry. Mm -hmm. um, massive quantities of land um, within the borders that I outlined in the last slide um, are or were once owned by private forested landowners. Um, in the area where we are, it's predominantly Rainier, Weyerhaeuser, and the Green Crow Corporation. So um, timber impacts in the area um, in many places started locally around the 1850s which means that nearly all of the forested land in Grays Harbor that you see when you're driving through is either third, fourth, or fifth generation forest. Um, Weyerhaeuser, for example, clear cuts every 39 years like clockwork, I'm told. Um, I won't spend too much time on the impact that that has, but just to briefly discuss, um, when they go in with those machines, um, and, you know, remove the vegetation, the um, soil temperature tends to increase. Um, the machines cause soil compression um, and um, erosion obviously ensues. Um, they leave slash piles. Um, it's common that they will uh, remove all of the branches from a tree and leave them lying and then light them on fire, which affects air quality. Uh, and of course, carbon or forests sequester carbon. So. Uh, when they go in, that carbon um, at different rates of speed, but it, it becomes more bio or more available in the environment and in the atmosphere. Um, and then, of course, if you're unfortunate enough to be wildlife that is living in that area, um, you have both the immediate impact of the machines coming in and um, taking away your grocery store and the roof over your head. Um, and then for many operations, um, they'll perform what's called a pre-commercial thin in approximately 15 years after the first clear cut. So when it starts to grow back, um, you know, they come in again and will um, not perform a clear cut, but they do. There's definitely a human presence that is not um, in balance uh, with the life that was living there before. Um, and then uh, more and more studies are coming out about how um, plant communities share resources. They share water and minerals and um, emit chemicals when they're under attack. Um, and older trees will either encourage or discourage their seedlings based on whether or not the environmental conditions around them are favorable. So when you clear cut, obviously that, that the value that's in that community is lost. Um, most foresters are required to replant, which I'm sure we all know um, means they're replanting in a monoculture um, where they can make the most money. Many um, companies in uh, standard timber production will um, laud that they're, they're actually planting more trees than they took. Um, but generally, what they forget to tell you is that um, you know, after that 15 years has passed, they make determinations about which trees are the strongest and then they remove um, all of those 
additional trees. So um, they also perform vegetative suppression through um, pesticide application um, to try to favor the trees that make them money. Um, and we discussed pre-commercial thinning. So when you look out on the road, um, you know, there's, a, there's a lot, as I'm sure all of you know, there's a lot um, of impact that you're seeing. Um, the other piece um, is that uh, invasives tend to come into those spaces once they've been cleared, which um, from the roadside might look like, you know, the land is healing and regreening, um, but in point of fact, um, those invasive species frequently are um, refusing um, to allow the, yeah, well, they're not refusing, they're, uh, but they, they outcompete um, things that used to be present and were important when they were present. Um, so, um, depending on the practices of the previous landowner on any given lot, not all timber re removal um, may be documented with permits. The big outfits obviously file um, with the Department of Natural Resources, but sometimes uh, smaller landowners may not follow all of the rules and regs, which means that um, the uh, state records don't always reflect what actually happened to your place. In addition, folks are, are permitted to remove uh, 5,000 board feet, which is roughly equivalent to one logging truck. Um, of timber for their own personal use without having to file, um, which is why for my place, um, I've chosen to rely on Google image history to understand what has happened there. You can see um, a yellow outline. There's a, sort of a fat rectangle on the left and then a tall skinny rectangle on the right. It's all one parcel, um, but based on the geo coordinates, that was the most efficient way to draw it out. So you can see um, it's, Google doesn't have um, perfect imagery for my particular parcel, but what it does has, have was useful. And you can see that in 2018, which is the most recent image um, that the free version would give me, um, that there's an awful lot of green out there. Um, so how did that happen? Um, there are um, obviously processes in play. A surprising number of trees that were felled were not removed. So the land has several nursery trees. In addition, it's believed that the former owners did not apply suppressive um, pesticides. So several other species were permitted to compete with the dug fir that were replanted, um, which results in areas where there are um, many tall skinny trees close together. Um, and that results in a condition where the forest actually begins to self thin. So some of the weakest trees that were competing previously um, fail and spaces start to open up again. Uh, which brings us to today. So I believe um, personally that the education piece of any conservation cemetery is critical to the mission. Um, so I'll walk you through a high level of what that looks like. Um, this is a quick shot from the entrance of the lot taken in late winter. Um, the stand generally is estimated to be 30 years old. Uh, some slash piles do remain. Uh, we have Himalayan blackberry and cutleaf blackberry. Um, we've removed nearly all of the scotch broom. We've got oxeye daisy, tansy, um, and some other invasive species um, that we're working on getting out and keeping out. In the forest itself, um, we have the occasional English holly, but really most of the forest um, at this point is native plants, uh, which is really exciting. Um, as a consequence, um, this lot is pretty remarkable for the diversity and the variability of the habitats that it contains. Um, we have places with seasonal water. Uh, we have stands of sizable conifers. Um, some specimens are much larger than these. Um, and then we have, um, you know, the, a wooded copse here and there, um, which is predominantly understory trees. So I am slowly and carefully working uh, on cataloging, mapping, and developing access footpaths. Um, and then from here, uh, we can get to the fun part, or what I think of as the fun part. Um, these are photos of the um, close-up photos of the forest current native um, inhabitants. So 
thanks to the uh, volume of decaying debris from self thinning, um, there are there there's a ton of fungal diversity in the forest, which is really exciting. Um, so much so that I didn't have room to put everybody up here. Um, in terms of flora, I created a database um, of all of the flora on the lot as I discover it. Um, the database allows me to show the relationships between light, water, soil, plants, wildlife, um, season, the seasons, and humans. Um, so that's, that's a time suck, but it, I get a lot of energy from that um, because it's exciting to me. Um, everything that's pictured here, these are all food source plants. So we have Pacific crabapple, elderberry, omelaria, thimbleberry, salmonberry, strawberry, and native blackberry. Um, this is a small sample of some of the conifers that we have on site. Um, and then a small sample of uh, the wildflowers that we have um, pictured. We've got Boykinia, Lismachia, Cistrinchium, Rose, Spirea, and Trillium. Um, and then we get to get to the critters. So um, discovering this guy was a surprise. Um, this salamander was in the middle of one of the slash piles, which is pretty dry and in a very sunny spot. Um, there's not water nearby. Uh, so um, work was halted here until we could confirm the genus and species um, and whether it was, um, whether this particular species is endangered. Um, and I can tell you that it's not. So um, we still left that area alone um, for the, and you know, there's plenty of work to do. So it was pretty easy to pivot to another area. Um, but we, but sometimes those things happen, um, when I'm out there working and you just can't predict, um, you know, what, how you're going to have to respond. Um, so we've got, um, I haven't included just for the interest of time, there's, we have a ton of critters that I haven't um, included here and not all of the interactions are documented, of course. Um, but we've got garter snakes and American white admiral butterflies. We've got chipmunks and rough grouse and millipedes. I mean, I have, I could bore you to tears with the pictures of moths and, and bumblebees and all that kind of stuff. Um, when it comes to bigger critters, we have deer. Um, and let me just look at my um, clock really quickly to see if I have time to show you. So well, is it's it, up to you. Kim, are you, Go ahead. I, is, is, I just want to ask, is anybody in a huge hurry if we went five or 10 minutes fast? Or feel no like, hurry. yep, no problem with me either. Just go ahead, Kim. Okay, well, I only have like two more slides. Um, and I don't, you know, so we've got deer. I don't know if you can see the fawn, um, but that was pretty exciting to get an image of that. And then um, we have mesopredators. Um, I have video of the coyote and the bobcat, um, if you want to take a look at that. And of course we have possum, but uh, folks don't generally get quite as excited about the possums. Um, and there's a fantastic um, nonprofit that I was so grateful to discover uh, that's called People and Carnivores. Um, and their mission is um, to help balance the well-being of both wildlife and people, um, which obviously is important to me because I have no interest in running off um, the bobcats or the coyotes. Um, and in addition, um, we have seen uh, one incidence of cougar scat, um, and then we've seen a couple of incidents of bear scat. Um, we're close enough in terms of the, the home range of a black bear um, that sometimes they snack on the salmon in one of the rivers that's nearby that happens to be located nearby. And so um, as I get closer to, um, ex you know, having folks who are not me um, out there, um, I'll partner more closely with them and I'm sure employ their techniques um, to help keep everybody um, healthy and safe. Um, and so that's it. So if folks want to uh, check out the deer or the coyote or the bobcat, I'm happy to share those videos. I'm totally down to see the animals moving. Me too. Uh, 
Surely. We'll get it on the video and then you can watch it later, Jean. All right. Oh, nice. Sweet. I mean, it's not super dynamic, but they're they're pretty sweet. And we have also um, seen elk scat, and the neighbor reports that there was a fairly large herd of elk that came through on Christmas. Um, the neighbors happened to be hunters, um, but they decided not to hunt on Christmas, so that was exciting. Um, And these videos are quite short. So you placed cameras out there in various spots or? Yes, we did. Um, it was in part, you can see the deer startle there. Um, in part, it was to find out who was already living um, in the space. And in part, it was um, to find out about potential human activity because um, you know, all the locals were familiar with the fact that the folks who owned the place before us um, you know, would only come out occasionally to vacation. And so sometimes folks get real comfortable when, they, um, uh, when that kind of situation is in place. And we just wanted to learn all of the, the folks who were spending time out there. Yeah. Um, and fortunately, we have, yeah. Um, our neighbors so far have been great. So that hasn't been, that hasn't been an issue. And the bobcat photo, uh, I think this video is at night. Um, the bobcat moves quickly. So you don't get a ton of time um, to take a look at it. And I can't decide if it's Bob or Roberta. I doubt I'll ever get close enough. To uh -huh. Uh -huh. But so oh. that was it. That's great. Exciting. Yeah. Kim, would you remind us how yeah. many acres this is? It's uh, 42. Wow. Kim, I'm not familiar with the word mesopredator. How is that distinctive from just predator? Um, well, Holly, I um, fake a lot of the um, information that I learn about <laughs> fauna because I'm a plant girl. Um, I, I don't generally do all things that have heartbeats, but what I can tell you, um, it, it seems to me that um, mesopredator is a term uh, that you would really read in relation to apex predator. Mm. So, a, you know, the the bear and the cougar, I'm assuming, are apex, and the meso, those are the um, mm. the predators that that don't aren't quite as uh, dominant. Right, right. That, that that was kind of what I thought it meant, and yet I'm just, we've we've got a lot of similar population here, although no bears or elk. But um, oh, it's lovely! It's absolutely lovely! It's so thrilling mm -hmm. to see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to see the life coming back—that must be so exciting. It is exciting, um, and it's there's still more to discover um, because it really hasn't, um, I mean, it's just, it's a pretty big place. So every time I go out there, I see something new. I was terrified that um, one of the plants I didn't know how to identify was um, invasive and it was everywhere. And I cannot tell you how happy I was when it bloomed and I went, oh, that's what you are. Um, and learned that I didn't have to try to um, protect the rest of the space. Yeah. Wow. Well, and you, and you have trillium. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Kim. I uh, already feel like I'm developing a crush on your space out there. Um, just hearing you talk about it and now seeing the pictures. And if ever there is a chance for a, you know, a little fact finding or not fact finding, just a little field trip, I would definitely be interested. And if ever you, when you get to the place where you're ever putting work parties together, or if that happens, I just want to 
put myself out there as very interested and open and yeah, that's it. Looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, uh I always appreciate that. And um, one of the things I'm learning about this self thinning process um, is that I may go up on a Monday and clear a footpath. Um, and then I come back on a Thursday and the ocean wind has blown through. Um, and uh, what was a cleared path is no longer a totally cleared path. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think um, folks, you know, I, I love to have company and um, it is, Still kind of a wild space. So um, where we go when we're out there um, sometimes depends on the weather or gear or the abilities that folks have because everybody's got to stay safe. Um, but it's, I, I hope um, to um, have the space um, be available and protected for a long time for a lot of people. So it would be amazing if you guys could be the first Yes, that sounds really exciting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how far are you from Olympia? Oh, you already said you were 70 miles from Tumwater Falls. So well done. Yep, that's right. Yeah. And so are you are you are you like north of Aberdeen or are you or, or where are you? We are north of Aberde Aber uh, Aberdeen, um, yes, um, okay. just along the Pacific Coast Highway, um, not okay. too far off. Great. Well, that is exciting. That is Wildlife Center. There's a lot of wildlife out there. Well, that's really, really exciting. Um, so what, so have you applied for like permits or anything like that or just looking into it or just kind of right now, just preparing the land and not worrying about much? Um, so I'm, uh, my work style, um, I, um, I like to, um, if I think I have the opportunity to make mistakes and fail, then I'm happy to try things and have conversations. Um, but if I have a sense that um, I may only get one shot at something, then I tend to be pretty darn cautious. Um, and the community that we're in is a very small community. Um, and, you know, a lot of folks um, depend on timber for their livelihood, which mm -hmm. I understand. Um, anyway, so I have a very long answer to your question. Um, I have not yet gone to... Um, the regulating bodies and said, this is what I want to do. Okay. Are, are you nervous about that based on your response from your neighbors or, uh, no, I'm not trying to encourage you to push you or one, one or the other, but I'm, I'm just kind of the, the thoughts that you might be, you might be entertaining. I just want to show up with my A game. Um, I've, I had, um, so the, the property, the image that I showed you all is, is the majority of the property. What I didn't show you is that it's a flagpole lot. And so there, there is an actual driveway that we also own that goes out to a county road. Um, so you can drive down a gravel road and then get to um, the piece in the slide. All that to say, we had considered whether or not um, we might want to put an office building or something like that um, at, in that um, up near the driveway um, or, you know, a place um, for guests, you know, if they, if they just a, a building or a space. Um, and so I had the, the um, someone from the county come out uh, confident. I mean, they're very smart, capable, responsible people. I feel totally confident that once I have my ducks in a row, um, that we'll be, I'll be able to get done what I need to. When we purchased the land, we purchased it for the purpose of setting up a conservation cemetery. So I know that that's expressly oh. permitted in, in our zoning. Um, oh, so that's I'm, great. I am, 
yeah I feel good about it I just I really like to have my ducks in a row if I if I only get one shot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah well that sounds that sounds brave and you've got a lot I mean that's wonderful I'm I'm really excited for you Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, and I think that there's a lot to be said for for uh, easing into a place, and um, you know, it, 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 the human community as well as as flora, fauna, etc. Um, and and um, getting getting really to know the the, the land and and everybody who lives there, whatever species they are, and, and uh, let, letting, uh, letting the land itself guide you in, in ways that clearly you're, you're doing. I know where, uh, where I live, um, being able to um, follow the deer trails and say, well, the deer know where to go. So I'll, I'll take their trail and see where it takes them is where it will take me and and you know metaphorically speaking it seems like you're doing that yeah i, th I think it's really exciting that uh i mean if i was a, if i was a logger and living in the immediate community uh, i think that's how i'd like to be buried you know uh it's going to make a lot of sense for your immediate community i don't know if that's your idea, but it's not just a bunch of yuppies out here in Thurston County that want to go, you know, get buried out there. I think it's really great that it's going to really accommodate a lot of people. I, yeah, I certainly hope so. And I know that um, the Pacific Coast Highway um, on the on the Olympic Peninsula tends to get approximately three million um, visitors uh, via car per year. Huh. So. Um, yeah, so, you know, it might be, I'm hoping, um, you know, depending on how everything shakes out. I mean, ultimately, I will say, um, I do care about the highest and best use um, of that space. Um, and, you know, if we accidentally trip on something that's highly endangered, um, and it, anyway, I, so I don't, I don't know what the future will bring. But if, if we do realize a conservation cemetery there, I'm, I do hope that there will be places for timber folk and places for um, people who've spent vacations there or, you know, some who have some tie to the place or folks who just can't get it where they are. Like, I mean, come one, come all. Nice. That's really great. Mm -hmm. mm. Thanks. And I'm really glad we're recording it so that folks who are in here can also get to see that beautiful land. Well, thanks for looking at my photo album. Mm. Yeah, thanks for sharing that with us. Mm -hmm. Really, really. That's great. Well, I think I'm gonna move into the rest of my day here, but thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Uh, you'll get a follow up from me, probably not till Wednesday. Um, and then we can chime in with to each other. And if anybody has any individual, individual thoughts, wants to reach out separately about what we've talked about today about the agenda, please do. Um, yeah, and I'll get this recording out to those especially that couldn't be here and hopefully they'll have a chance to look at it too. So they can chime in as well. Right, so Angie, this this um, uh, Google thing that you sent to us, we we what what's your expectation here? Nothing. I think you have to accept an an invitation, maybe, or say okay. I don't even know what it looks like on your end. Okay, <laughs> we'll go find out. Yeah. Thanks. Are you not seeing it? Um, well, I, I have to slog back okay. through a lot. Okay. When did, did you send it today, yesterday? Yeah. No, just in the last half hour before our meeting. Oh, okay, great. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Great. Stay cool. Great. Thanks, everybody. Take care, everybody. Take care. Okay, we'll see you. See you next month. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.